My name's Charlotte, and I'm here to talk to you today about brainstem death testing. Today we'll be covering a definition of brainstem death, preconditions before you can begin brainstem death testing, and the specific tests and reflexes involved. It's important to note that this video discusses the UK definition of brainstem death and the specific practices of brainstem death testing in the UK, and there are subtle differences in different countries. So first of all, what is the brainstem? The brainstem is the structure that connects the cerebrum of your brain to your spinal cord and cerebellum. It's made up of three sections, the midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. The brainstem contains important nuclei that are critical for many vital functions of life, including the drive to breathe, controlling your blood pressure and heart rate, swallowing, and keeping you conscious. Brainstem death is when there is an irreversible cessation of brainstem functions or reflexes that are necessary to the existence of a living person. This includes the loss of capacity for consciousness and the loss of capacity to breathe. There must be a known cause for the irreversible brain lesion and no contributing metabolic derangements. Brainstem death can be confusing as it's diagnosed when a person's breathing and circulation is still being supported by artificial life support. However, when taken off the life support, they will not ever regain consciousness or the ability to breathe again due to the irreversible brainstem damage. So according to UK law, the person has died. In the UK, there are certain preconditions that must be met before brainstem death testing can begin. Firstly, the patient must be deeply unconscious, apneic, which means not breathing by themselves, and mechanically ventilated. This typically occurs in an intensive care or ICU setting. There then must be certainty that all reversible causes of coma have been excluded. Sedative drugs. If sedative drugs have been used, you must ensure that adequate time has passed for the residual effects to have worn off. This might be a long time, especially if sedation has been used for a prolonged period or if renal or liver dysfunction is present. Hypothermia. Core body temperature should be more than 35 degrees Celsius before testing can begin. This is because the brainstem loses its reflexes when hypothermic below 28 degrees Celsius. Endocrine abnormalities. Extreme endocrine abnormalities such as severe hypothyroidism, adrenal dysfunction, or panhypopituitarism should be excluded and treated if identified, as these may cause a profound but reversible decrease in level of consciousness. Metabolic abnormalities. Gross metabolic abnormalities should also be excluded, including significant abnormalities of sodium, potassium, magnesium, phosphate, calcium, and glucose. Abnormalities such as extremely low phosphate levels or severe hypernatremia or high sodium related to diabetes insipidus may mimic brainstem death and these things are reversible. Cardiovascular instability. Cardiovascular instability, and particularly severe hypotension, precludes testing of brainstem death reflexes. Systolic blood pressure should be greater than 90 millimeters of mercury with a mean arterial pressure or MAP of over 60. Intravenous fluids and the use of vasoactive drugs might be needed to maintain blood pressure for the testing period. So who can perform the tests? The UK guidance states that the tests must be performed by two qualified doctors together who are competent with the testing procedure and have had full registration with the General Medical Council for over five years. One of them must be a consultant. 
So now that we're satisfied that all of the preconditions have been met, we can move on to the tests. There are seven tests. Number one, pupillary light reflex. This involves testing for direct and consensual pupil reflexes in response to shining a bright light into each eye. Normally by doing this, you would expect to see pupil constriction, but in brainstem death, the response would be the absence of pupil constriction. The afferent or sensory nerve in this reflex arc is the optic nerve. The involved brainstem nucleus is the Edinger-Westphal nucleus in the midbrain. And the efferent or motor nerve is the ocular motor nerve. The corneal reflex. This reflex tests for blinking in response to brushing the cornea of the eye with cotton wool. In brainstem death, the expected response would be the absence of this reflex. The afferent nerve is the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. The brainstem nuclei involved are the trigeminal and facial nuclei in the pons of the brainstem. And the efferent nerve is the facial nerve which responds via contraction of the orbicularis oculi muscle. The oculovestibular reflex. This reflex involves testing for nystagmus or ocular deviation after instilling ice cold saline into the auditory canal. Both sides are tested separately. In brainstem death, the response would be the absence of eye movement towards the side of saline infiltration. The afferent nerve is the vestibulocochlear nerve. The brainstem nuclei involved are the vestibular and abducens nuclei in the pons and the oculomotor nucleus in the midbrain. The efferent nerves are the oculomotor and abducent nerves to the medial and lateral rectus muscles of the eye. Supraorbital pain stimulus. In this reflex, painful stimulus is applied to the supraorbital ridge. Normally, you would expect to see grimacing in the face, but in brainstem death, there is again no response. The afferent nerve is the trigeminal nerve. The brainstem nuclei involved are the trigeminal and facial nuclei in the pons, and the efferent nerve is the facial nerve. The gag reflex. Testing for this reflex involves insertion of a spatula to the base of the soft palate to stimulate the pharynx. Normally, a patient would respond by gagging with elevation of the soft palate and pharyngeal contractions. But in brainstem death, there is an absence of this reflex. The afferent nerve is the glossopharyngeal nerve. The brainstem nuclei involved are the spinal trigeminal nucleus and the nucleus ambiguous in the medulla oblongata of the brainstem. The efferent nerve is the vagus nerve. The cough reflex. This involves insertion of an endotracheal catheter to the carina of the bronchial tree. This is the ridge of cartilage at the base of the trachea that marks where the trachea splits into the left and right main bronchi. Normally, this would trigger a cough with visible movement of the vocal cords, but in brainstem death, this reflex is absent. The afferent and efferent nerve is the vagus nerve, and the nuclei involved are multiple nuclei in the medulla oblongata, which form the cough center.
The final test is the apnea test, and this should only be performed after demonstration of the absence of the other six brainstem reflexes. This test aims to demonstrate brainstem death by showing a lack of respiratory response to an acidemic stimulus. This is typically done by reducing minute ventilation using the ventilator so that the partial pressure of carbon dioxide rises to 6 kilopascals. pH is less than 7.4, but the oxygen saturations maintain at over 95%. Normally, this would stimulate respiratory effort, but in brainstem death, there will be no respiratory activity. And as a result, this causes a rise in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide of over 0.5 kilopascals from the start of the test. Confirmation of death. For brainstem death to be confirmed, the full set of tests must be done on two separate occasions. The time of death is the time of the completion of the first set of testing. After brainstem death is diagnosed, life support is withdrawn. Before withdrawal, there is the opportunity to discuss the patient's wishes with relatives, as it may be possible for organs to be donated to save other lives through transplantation. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.